You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Dear AMD, you lied. You lied big time. You got on stage and you said 50 to 70% of a performance increase over the 6950 XT. But on average, we see about a 35% performance increase. Your own reviewer's guide that you sent out to tech YouTubers said in best case scenario, 42 to 43% of a performance increase. That is not 50, 60, or 70%. And something went wrong between the announcement and the actual go live date of the product. And people are calling that driver issue a bug in the drivers and supposedly you're working over the holidays to fix it driver issue driver issue driver issue do you have any idea how many comments I get on a regular basis every time I mention AMD I used to have AMD with driver issues I would go AMD but all my friends say they have driver issues driver issues driver issues do you do you have any idea how tired I am of reading those comments comment driver issue down below December the 13th rolled around and I woke up with four and a half hours of sleep because the last video that's on this channel prior to this video is the video talking about all the performance numbers from the embargo day, December the 12th of the 7900 XTX. And I released it on launch day as I was going to Micro Center to get my hands on this card. I worked all night long on that video. I stayed up until about three in the morning working on that video. And I went to Micro Center with about four and a half hours of sleep just so I could get this card right here. I had incredibly high hopes for this card. I was hoping it would be the AMD equivalent to the 1080 Ti. It would come in and it would punch well above its weight class and knock the competition on its back but it did not live up to my expectations. It didn't even live up to AMD's expectations. Now look, even though the card didn't turn out to be what I wanted, I still had a really good time going to Micro Center. I had a lot of excitement. I showed up and I was number 46 in line. The employees came outside and said, hey, look, we got 70 cards. Everybody's like, yeah, but 35 are for the XTX and, and the other 35 are for the XT. And immediately you could you could hear everybody go, oh, the, the, the moans and the groans came out because Nobody wanted an XT. No, nobody wanted that, okay? Everybody was there for the XTX. I was in the back of the line, and that's where it was really the worst. People didn't even wait at that point. They just started leaving. I mean, why? I mean, we're in the back of the line. We're not getting one. But thankfully, I had a subscriber get there the night before, and thanks to him and the people he was with, I was able to trade places and essentially get my hands on this card. So you know who you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now look, I don't wanna overly downplay the card. The card is a really good card. The 7900 XTX is a really good card. The problem is it's surrounded by a web of lies from AMD. It's plagued with more driver issues. It's a thousand dollars for the card and it only goes up from there. AMD literally became Nvidia with this graphics card launch. They made outrageous performance claims that they could not live up to. And then on top of that, they try to sell you a $900 wrongly named 7900 XT. That's right. The 7900 XT should be $100 cheaper and it should be called the 7800 XT. Does that ring any bells? You know, Nvidia, RTX, 4080, 12 gigabyte, $900. AMD literally just did the exact same thing. People see the performance and they realize, oh, wow, yeah. This card's a ripoff. It is a ripoff. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And in this case, AMD's, I'm sorry, but they kind of became the villain this time around. Maybe they didn't lie. Maybe it is all just a driver related issue. But the problem I have with that is the fact that I don't see a world where AMD is going to do a software update, fix the drivers, and now magically you're going to get 15 to 20 to 25 percent more performance. I think you'll be lucky to get five to 10%. I really do. Now, again, it's not all bad. There's a lot of good things about this card and I wanna talk about it. The first good thing, and this is subjective, but in my opinion, I think the card looks absolutely awesome. I think this is a very good looking card, I really do. The LEDs on the front light up white. You can't change it, but I don't care because the white looks good, the white and black go good together. And in all honesty, if I were to keep this card, I could see myself doing a Batman themed PC, maybe call it the Dark Knight. And you know, this graphics card would be vertically mounted in the front and it would be the showpiece of, of the overall, you know, aesthetic, if you will. Now, the other thing I wanna praise this for is that the exact same day that I got this card, Card. somebody sent me the RTX 4080 for review and there is a video coming on that so stay tuned but I unboxed the cards at the at the exact same time here at my house and I, and I can honestly tell you this 
This card feels like a premium product. The 4080 is a lot bigger than this and it feels like a paperweight. This on the other hand feels sturdy. It feels like an anchor. It feels durable. It feels premium. I will admit you pay a thousand dollars for this. You feel like you paid for a thousand dollar product. It feels premium. And so in my opinion, it looks good. It feels good. AMD delivered there and they also delivered on their promise of the easy upgrade. Something that you never thought would actually be a selling point, but it actually is because the RTX 4080 would not fit in my case as it was. I had to completely take apart my custom water cooling loop and move around panels and everything just to barely fit it in the case. This guy popped right on in. No adapters, no new power supply, no new case or uh, space requirements or limitations or anything like that. I took out my 3080, I popped this in its place, plug and play, took the two eight pin adapters, popped it right on in. I had zero issues getting this up and running. And so it truly was an easy upgrade. And I got to give AMD a lot of credit for that. AMD dropped the ball on efficiency here. They were supposed to come in and be the efficiency king, you know, more performance per watt type of deal. But sitting idle on my desktop doing nothing, I'm pulling in over 100 watts of usage. I confirmed this myself via the AMD Adrenaline software performance monitor. I also cross-checked it with hardware info. I also double-checked with my subscriber and my Discord. He confirmed the exact same thing. And not to mention multiple other big tech YouTubers also confirm the exact same thing. This card draws 100 watts sitting idle on your desktop doing nothing. Now the plus side is as long as you don't touch any of the settings, then when you're gaming, it never goes above the total board power of 355 watts. However, the moment you go in there, if you do a custom overclock, if you do the auto overclock, it doesn't matter. The moment you adjust the settings to try to get even a little bit more performance, the power draw goes right above the total rated board power of 355 watts. And now you're pulling in 370, 380, and in some cases, even 397 watts is what I've seen reported by other people. This card is not energy efficient. It is definitely power hungry, and it does not meet everybody's expectations of energy efficiency. The numbers don't tell you everything. I can show you a Warzone 2 benchmark and you'll say, oh wow, this, this card's amazing, especially for Warzone, it beats a 4090. How awesome is that? But that doesn't tell you about the coil line. This card cries like a little baby the moment you fire up Warzone. It sounds incredibly annoying. It does not sound good at all whatsoever. There is a lot of coil whine on the reference model. Now, unfortunately, if you were hoping to utilize the 24 gigabytes of VRAM on the 7900 XTX for VR, I'm sorry to report that VR is not properly working. There are definitely some issues related to VR. My friend in, in the Discord confirmed he had VR related issues when trying to use this card in VR. He said he's probably gonna return the card and try to go get a 4080 or 4090 instead. I'll have his comment on the screen right now so you can see exactly what he said. And for me personally, I had HDR issues. If you have an HDR display, this card does not work well with it out of the box. It does not detect that you have an HDR display. It does not try to tell you, hey, uh, would you like to set up for HDR or anything of that nature? It just plugs in, turns on, and it looks like crap. Okay, now it's performance time, but before I can show you any numbers, I have to show you the testing hardware. So here's all of my specifications on the screen right now. This is the hardware I used in order to test this graphics card. I'm mostly comparing the 7900 XTX to my RTX 3080. And that's because if I keep the 7900 XTX, it will have to replace my RTX 3080. And so it's a very valid question for me. Is a 7900 XTX better than the 3080. I'll try and squeeze in a few 4080 benchmarks for you as well, ju just for comparison's sake, because at the end of the day, the 7900 XTX is not meant to be a 3080 competitor. It's a 4080 competitor. And so it's important to keep all of that in mind. If you're a diehard Call of Duty player, then the 7900 XTX is probably the card for you. Because in Warzone 2 at 4K on the balance preset, it averages 171 FPS. The 3080 is only at 90 FPS. The 4080 is at 128 FPS. Now looking over at 1440p on the balance preset, the 7900 XTX XTX averages 219 FPS. The 3080 is only at 130 FPS. So quite a performance difference. If we factor in the 4080, it's at 196 FPS. So a strong win here for the 7900 XTX. And at 1080p on the balance preset, the average frame rate is 222 FPS. And for the 3080, it's 167 FPS. For the 4080, it is 213 FPS. So across the board, the 7900 
Android XTX is doing really well in Call of Duty Warzone 2. And this will be my last benchmark with the 4080 included. And we're looking at Halo Infinite. The XTX at 4K Ultra averages 116 FPS and the 3080 only averages 85 FPS, but the 4080 averages 126 FPS. At 1440p, the XTX averages 178 FPS and the 3080 averages 132 FPS, but the 4080 averages 202 FPS. So quite a loss for the 7900 XTX at 1440p. And finally at 1080p, the XTX averages 221 FPS and the 3080 averages 169 FPS. And lastly, the 4080 averages 269 FPS. I had a request from the community to benchmark Fortnite, so here you go. If we turn everything on, and this does include TSR, TSR Epic, and TSR Recommended, the XTX averages 99 FPS. Exact same settings, the 3080 only averages 62 FPS. And if we turn on the hardware ray tracing feature with the exact same settings, then the XTX averages 81 FPS and the 3080 averages 56 FPS. So I think it's safe to say the XTX does perform better in ray tracing than the 3080. At 4K with the performance mode preset, the XTX averages 404 FPS. The 3080 averages 354 FPS. At 1440p, the XTX averages 443 FPS, while the 3080 averages 446 FPS. And finally, at 1080p, the XTX averages 463 FPS, and the 3080 has a very close 456 FPS. Next up, we have Forza Horizon 5, and I ran the in-game benchmark on the Extreme preset. At 4K, the the XTX averages 122 FPS. At 1440p, the XTX averages 131 FPS. And at 1080p, the XTX averages 146 FPS. And lastly, I discovered that the Extreme preset does not max out the ray tracing capabilities of Forza Horizon 5. And so I ran one more benchmark with the XTX at 4K Extreme preset, and I maxed out the ray tracing also at Extreme, and the XTX averaged 109 FPS. Unfortunately, I do not have data for the 3080 at this time. Okay, so I think the benchmarks are quite telling. Number one, the XTX is no slouch. It does put up a fight, it performs incredibly well, and overall, it absolutely destroys the RTX 3080. And you know I'm a big fan of the RTX 3080. And so if I like the RTX 3080's performance, obviously I have to like the performance of the XTX. And I do have to admit, the rasterization on the XTX is quite impressive. And overall, even the ray tracing is better than the RTX 3080. And so again, I gotta give it credit. I didn't really show the ray tracing numbers for the 4080. That's coming in my next video. And I promise you, they are substantially better than the XTX. Overall, look, I had a lot of hope for AMD and the 7900 XTX, and I did step up and I did put my money on the line. I showed up, I was exhausted, I was on four and a half hours of sleep, I had to trade places with somebody in line in order to get the card, and I paid full MSRP of the card, and I have spent the last week trying to find ways to give this card a glowing recommendation. But at the end of the day, it is a good card, but it's not a great card. It is not a perfect card. It is flawed and it's unfortunately surrounded by a web of lies. If you're in the market for a $1,000 plus GPU, wait, don't buy now and just wait. I promise you the 7900 XTX will only continue to fall in price and you'll probably be able to get a few games with it if you wait or put a little bit more money with it and go buy yourself a 4080. That's where we stand. Hey, look, that's all I got for the video. Thank you for hanging out with me. If you liked it, please do me a favor. Hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. I just hit 5,000 subscribers. So thank you so very much for the support. If you're new, please consider becoming part of the team, hitting the subscribe button because I would love to have you here. Thank you so much for all the support. I look forward to talking to you down in the comment section below. What do you think about the 7900 XTX? And until next time, E-Rock out.